Now that we have our solar grid tie system set up, we still have to fill you in on that, but we're starting to make some changes to make our place more energy efficient and just lower our operating costs. And so today is going to be a fun project that will bring you along the way with. Thinking about AC in November in Minnesota seems a little bit silly, but there's a lot more benefits going on about this unit that we're installing. Yeah, this unit we're installing is a mini split, but it has uh, heat pump capabilities and it's a new generation heat pump that is much more efficient than say the heat pump systems I grew up with where when it got down to 50 degrees, it really didn't do anything anymore. This one should work all the way down into the teens and produce heat for us. So on the lead in, lead out seasons around here where where we're at right now, we're a week before Thanksgiving, we're having highs in the low 40s and lows in the 20s and 30s. It'll be able to heat this place and make it so we don't need to be running our gas heater and using propane. And this is a pretty simple DIY project, so this is something that you can totally do too, so we'll bring you along the way. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, we need to figure out where to put this thing. We have a nice spot here in the middle of the room. Obviously, it goes in the wall. We want to find a spot where it does circulate to the room well. and we have interesting construction in our walls here. This is a ladder frame construction. Mostly there's just these long thin boxes, so we gotta figure out where those are at so we don't drill a hole through an important piece of wood that's holding the building up. But I do know that they lined up all the ends of these boards on a vertical, so there's wood here, and I don't think there's anything to tell about over here. So we could put the hole through the wall anywhere in here. like that. The important thing is this, you can see where the hole is supposed to be and we have to be below 14 inches to clear the horizontal uh, ladder piece here. Yeah, it'll actually be like right here. Perfect. So we'll just do that. I'll push. Look at you actually reading the directions. Mm -hmm. How does it feel? I feel like I'm emasculated here. No, <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out how many screws they want in that thing, but I think I'm just gonna make a decision and go with it. I'm right, gonna get back to where we were. I think that's it. Okay. <laughs> that's crummy job taping, but I think it works. <laughs> okay, so I know 13 inches from the ceiling is the middle of our horizontal here. Yeah, that was definitely in the wood. That's good. What are you showing everyone your sweatshirt. <laughs> That's the man I married. Yep. <laughs> Seems like these would be good ones to do. There's no stud behind those. And then we're going to pilot drill this all the way through the outside. And instructions say to put it at a downward slope so that the water from the air conditioner drains out. go there's a hole in the house uh-oh so let's uh let's go ahead and install this bracket <laughs> hmm. i do the same thing my third hand uh-huh Before I tighten all these down, let's verify level one more time. That's a good idea. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. Let's 
drill the big hole. Oh yeah, look at that. So this is gonna be a two and a half inch hole. So it's not gonna touch these ribs. That's perfect. Yeah, let's go start with the inside one. <laughs> Can't help yourself, can you? Nope. goes. We do have insulation in our walls, just barely. So this is only a four inch wall. This is part of why our cabin's not that well insulated because you just can't put that much insulation in a four inch wall. Yeah. All right, let's go do the outside one. Don't smash my herbs. <sighs> okay. Let's do this. Safety squints on. <laughs> Do they line up? Oh yeah. Excellent. Are you guys hiding out in here? How's it going? Big stretches. Hi. This is the back of the unit. Um, we need to move the drain hose over to this side and bend the tubes out so then we can put it on the wall. Somehow we get this hose off. This looks like I'm going to break it. Oh, all right. Did you just pull? <laughs> no, I pushed left on this thing. Uh oh. It's a clip. Yeah, actually, I'm just supposed to go like that. I see you put it on and twist. Let's turn these things out first, which has me nervous. Very nervous. Yeah. Oh boy. Okay. Hopefully I didn't kink anything in there. What, what's in here? Oh. These are the refrigerant lines. Yeah. So we will be hooking onto these, but they're copper. Okay. And they're soft copper. And then here's that drain port. There's a little knob there. I should be able to just push this on and twist that. There it goes. Clicked. Plug the other side. I'm just going to try and use the screwdriver to push this thing in. Okay, now will it come out? Oh no. Maybe. Uh oh. Just lost your tool. Okay, kind of came back out a little having bit. having a tantrum. I need something skinnier. Oh, yeah. That worked. Okay, so both of these are going through the hole. Yep. Okay. Hold up. Hang on, back, sorry, can you go back? Oh no, that broke something. Uh oh. So definitely heard something break in there. Okay, good. I need to get these inside this tube. Okay. There, that's better. You can go ahead. I think it's going. Okay. Okay, let's go going. more. Do I need to go on the outside? There. There it goes. Is that right? That is. What do you need me to do? Go outside? Pull? No, I think. <laughs> Here's the part that broke. Good. Okay, so that top is right. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. These pipes need to be bent. I bent them wrong. Because I didn't read the instructions. <laughs> Let's take it back out. Are you kidding? Yep. Oh. Oh. You got it? Yep. Okay. Well, successful. We're learning. Okay, so how do these need bent? 
Um, I'm gonna read the instructions again real quick. But basically, everything needs to line up here, and this is over here. Okay. I don't know if you can see that. While Ryan works on reading some of the instructions, I thought I'd give you a quick look at the AC that we've been using the last two summers. Now, thankfully in Northern Minnesota, we don't need to use the AC all that often, but we can occasionally dip into the 90s. And so it's nice to be able to have a little area to cool down a little bit, especially if we're out working in the heat for hours. And so our little unit has not been keeping up on the really hot days. So here it is in all of its glory, a good old gold star. I don't even know how old this is or how we even got it. It's We've just kind of had it forever and a lot of these grates were totally bent in. So I sat here this summer with like a little knife trying to straighten them all out and uh, it like hardly ever worked at all. It maybe decreased the temperature by a couple degrees and I'm sure the price point to run that thing, the energy costs were just awful. You can kind of feel it if you stood right in front of it, but like sleeping at night, it was so hot and everything. So we're so excited for this new mini slit. It's going to be great. And I'm sure some of you are wondering why we don't have a wood stove. And I'm with you on that. On our first homestead, we had a wood stove and that was our primary heat source. And we have a wood splitter and everything like we're ready and capable. And But when we moved into this new homestead, it already came with a propane stove. And so we've been using that. It's kind of been a nice break to be honest we've had so many things going on here just getting settled on the new homestead that not having to split and stack and store firewood has given us extra time but then our propane stove actually went out for a few weeks this winter and that got a little sketchy we had to run off of a space heater but thankfully the cabin is so small it did just fine but we had this moment where we were like okay if we can't get the propane stove to get working again is this our moment are we going to switch over to wood and all of that and ultimately we kind of decided propane probably is best because this is not our forever home we're eventually hopefully going to be building our home to add on to the shop that we're building for ryan right now and so this will end up just being extra overflow space for guests or family or maybe we'll end up renting it out like an airbnb situation not sure but in those cases, propane will be best. We don't want to have to come down here and keep a fire going all winter. And of course, if you travel, that gets tricky. So as much as I love wood, and we're certainly going to be using wood at our main house, this is good enough for now. So we just need to modify our bend angle here. Okay, so now everything is lined up with a little bit of an S bend. So that should line up with the hole better. Okay. Let's go try again. So could you go down a hair? That way they go in straight. Yeah. I'm hearing you hitting the steel on the other side. I feel like I need to go on the other side. Okay. Okay, I'll be back. <laughs> hey Katie, oh. this isn't gonna work at all. What? Come back in here. Here's the problem. What? This bottom hose right here? Yeah. This is the drain hose. It has to stay at the bottom of all of them. See how it comes up and goes through the two and then up? Oh. <laughs> that drain hose has to stay on the bottom. This one? Yeah. Okay, and hang on, this is all bent now. We're doing great. Should I go out there? No, I think it's your second one right here. There's a second hose that's just going in right now. Can you see it or not? Yeah, it's right here. <laughs> is that it? I don't know, I think we're bending something again. Go outside and make sure we're not. Okay. Do you have the copper line coming out or just the drain hose? Uh-oh, yeah, something's bent. Is it coming out or not? Uh -oh. oh, no, no, don't do that. Okay, now get it with your finger. Can you get it? Okay. Now, that, 
Hopefully we did not mess up that cover too. I hope not either. Is, is it creased? Yep. Oh, crap. Go oh, verify. You gotta go verify. Okay. We're not doing this again. Okay. Oh, much better. Don't don't pull it tight. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Check it back. Ah. Uh, I need. <laughs> Did we do it? No, cause I can't. <sighs> okay. You pulled it all the way tight, and I couldn't get the top one. Leave it like this for now. <laughs> <sighs> so much for an easy DIY project. Well, I think we made that harder than it needed to be. Oh yeah, because I still got to pull electrical wiring in, which maybe should have done first. Oh well. We ended up taping all of this together, and that made the whole process. So much better. Highly recommend doing that. Should have thought ahead and grow out my fingernails for this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then see if you can take the front cover off. Don't break it. I know, I'm nervous. It feels like there's clips in. Yeah. And then take it all the way off? Uh, it might just flip up, I don't know. Yeah, it looks like it just flips up. Woof. All right, we gotta bring some wires in here. Okay, I'm up on the ladder. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Oh. I don't know, there's a bunch of loose ends. Keep doing ends. what you're doing, you're swerking. I don't know if they're gonna stay straight. All right. Keep pushing. Oh, that's good. Trying to do this by feel too. I think it goes through here. Oof. Aha. Okay. Nice. So there's a little metal ring that you push it through. Kind of weird. Anyway, so now we just have to hook this up. There's all these four terminals here, and they tell you what color goes to which one. Oh, there's actually numbers here. Look at this. Here's two, three, one, and then green goes to the green, the ground. So, got to hook those up there, and then we'll be able to snap the thing down. So, I take back everything bad I said. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Why is this not going? All right, and then move the block. Make sure it's all lined up. Something's not right. I don't know, maybe it is. Let's do lunch. Okay, I agree. I'm ready for a break. Yep, okay, we had a lovely lunch. It's time to move to the outside part of the install. Are That's... you having the best day? We saved some of the venison bones for the dogs. Yum! Woohoo! All right, so we got our line kit. We'll hook up from there down to here. Oh, good, the legs are right underneath it. So we just need to make a spot for this on the ground over there and make it nice and level. So thankfully, I think we won't have to dig up any of my plants. We can just utilize this area that I had the pot sitting. So 
super excited about that. I was dreading that maybe possibly it was going to be on my rhubarb or some of my herbs here, but yeah, I think that'll work out. And I'm also kind of excited that it's just going to have all the utility stuff kind of together here. And yeah. And we're going to have just stuff spread out everywhere. Totally. So I have all my mulch down there. Do you think you can just lay it on top or do we need to take it off? I'm just going to go right on top. Okay. That's easier. Yeah. I'm not super worried. I mean, really the only thing I'm concerned about here is we are on... You know, obviously the pitch of the roof comes this way and it could slough off a bunch of snow. Right. So I may need to put some snow jacks on the roof there to keep that from happening. But yeah, let's just put these here and see what it looks like and feel how stable it is and make a decision from there. Where'd those pavers come from? Um, that cabin over there. Oh, nice. I'm gonna put a cramp on my style when it comes to my garden tours. Here, come look at my AC unit surrounded by my lovely herb. <laughs> Whatever. I'll appreciate it on those few 90 degree days we have. Oh, I mean, this is gonna. Be well, in the heat. heat. Yeah. yeah. We'll be using the heat more than the AC, I think. Oh, yeah. All right, let's just set her in place. Okay. Do you need my help? Yeah, it's kind of heavy. Okay. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. No pretty small. Okay, so we were just about to set the AC condenser unit that goes outside, but we've kind of changed gears because I realized that was going to block where the electrical has to happen. So we're going to go ahead and do the electrical now. This is kind of the, the part that I think is probably going to be the most tricky to anybody doing this at home is to figure out where to get your power from, how to hook it up to the device properly. In our case here, um, we're pretty lucky. So this little um, heater, the propane stove that we run our Whole place on here it has a dedicated circuit right behind it that the fan is plugged into and it's labeled as furnace in the circuit breaker panel so this is it right here it's a dedicated circuit only this is on it and the only part of this that's running off of it is the little vent fan that pulls like a fraction of an amp so it's going to have no problem having the ac unit on it also so what i'm going to do this happens to be just on the inside of the wall we're going to poke a hole through the wall to the other side we're going to mount this disconnect, you got to have your AC on a disconnect, so this disconnect's going to go on the outside. The wire's going to pass through into this box. That's how we're going to get power out there. And then from here is going to be a chunk of seal tight conduit that's going to run over to the condenser and hook up power to it. And actually, we just realized that we never actually told you guys what mini split we have. So I'm going to turn the camera around and Ryan will fill us in. This is the EG4 12,000 BTU mini split from Signature Solar. It does both air conditioning, 12,000 BTU, and it does heat pump. I can't remember the BTU on it. I think it's slightly less. The reason we went with this unit uh, from a BTU standpoint was last two summers we've run a little 5,000 BTU window unit. And if we kept it running 100% of the time, it would keep it fairly cool in here and it would fall behind during the day. So we were close, but not quite enough. They have a 9,000 BTU option which would have been fine for air conditioning, but since we're gonna use this as a heat pump as well, and we're trying to push it far, and as far into winter as we could, we went with the one that's just slightly bigger. It runs off 115 volts, 120 volts, so you don't need a, a 240 volt power supply for it. In this case, it's just the dedicated outlet we had. We already knew we already had power here, so we wanted to stay with 120 volt. I think I mentioned early on, but this is a very high sear rating, so it's a extremely energy efficient. They also package this with solar panels, I believe, and they can they have a version of this where you can actually hook solar panels directly to it. In the summer, it'll just run your air conditioning directly off the solar panels. You don't even take electricity to use them. We don't really have a need for that since we have the big solar field out there. So what I'm doing is temporarily installing this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, get back, get back on there. There you go. That's how you drill a hole. It's dropping. Yeah, this is getting chilly. We need a heat pump running. We do. Yeah, we blast our, our sun. It's not very high. It's right behind these trees, so... Goodbye, sun. We have about five months.
Oof. There's power right there. Easy. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Oopsies. That's a really weird place for wire to be. Oh, you know what? I think I can get away with the trick here. So I've been str struggling to figure out how I'm going to get in the top. The electrical box is just like right here. I'm trying to figure out how it's going to get into the top of it. I think I can unscrew this and just kind of peel it back. <laughs> Look at that. The back of that outlet is literally right here. Oh my gosh. This is awesome. amazing. I'll just be able to pop in through that top right there, push my wire in there. That's. Heck yeah. It normally doesn't work out like that. <laughs> no. And then right there. And then I'll go ahead and just figure out. I need to do that when I get in the box. Cut that guy off. And then this will slip through here. I'll silicone all that. All dried up. Yep. We're almost the end of the mess though. There it goes. Well, good thing we need a lot of it today. All right. Just gonna put a very generous amount around here. Yep, it's gonna do it. So the top one goes into the stud. So what we're doing this for, there's a drain underneath for when you run it as a heat pump. And you need to get that water away from it because it will potentially freeze. This is where the gas lines come into, and this is where the power is going to come into. Control wiring comes in here, power comes in here. So we're going to have two wires run in here, and we'll have the two hoses hooked up here. And then the drain line for the condensate just comes down the side of the building. Voila. Yeah. So these need to come down gently. Careful not to collapse these. There's a drain hose goes on here. And then when you get all this together, you wrap it in this tape stuff that kind of makes it look nicer. Oh, it's got nice little O-rings in it. I am sure somebody watching this is gonna freak out because I'm using speed wrenches. Get over it. <laughs> there's always somebody. This is sufficient. Because there's O-rings, I don't feel the need to crank on it. Retainer clips so that they don't back out. It's pretty clever. There it goes, just kind of snapped over that groove. Yeah, let's just get these to where they need to go. And then we'll worry about making them look pretty. We'll try and make this come down as straight as we can. Okay, I just wrapped up the electrical. Didn't want to bore you with doing the actual work, so we'll just walk through what I did here. Um, I ran this half inch seal tight between my disconnect box and here with the seal tight connectors. I pulled 
a neutral and a line THHN wire. And then I also pulled a ground. I didn't have any green, so I just wrapped it in green tape. And then I landed all three of these from the uh, indoor unit and grounded it as well. It didn't come with the seal gland. I happen to have one. I'm, I'm not really sure why it didn't, but you really do need a seal gland here. So this is all wired on this end. I have it wired to the breaker box over there. We can look at that real quick. This unit's 120 volt and I couldn't find any 120 volt disconnect boxes. So I just used a general outdoor breaker box with a 20 amp breaker on it because that's what this thing wants. So I ran half inch seal tight up to here. My THHN wire comes in. My neutrals just connect, grounds ground together. I probably could have used this ground bar, but I didn't for some reason. My power comes in from the house to this side of the breaker, and then the power comes out the other side to go to the unit. So you flip that on and it turns the unit on. We'll put the cover plate on, but we're basically all electrically hooked up now. And the only thing left to do to activate the unit before we actually turn power onto it is to release the gas into the system. So this thing comes pre-charged, you hook up the lines, and then you just, once you're all ready to go, and lines are hooked up, you release the gas in the system. So we'll just do that now. Should be a couple Allen keys in here. Oh yeah, they're way in there. I hear it. Yeah. And I guess there's a second seal. You're supposed to back it all the way out to the second seal. There it is. And then tighten it a little bit. So that's it. We can power the thing up and see if it actually does what it's supposed to do. Oh, and the drain. There's a big hole under here somewhere. I know there is. I saw it earlier. Oh, I see it over there. Okay. Whew. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this breaker now. And then um, we'll turn the main breaker on in the house and it should have power. I'll put the batteries in the remotes. <laughs> my hands are cold. <laughs> what we got here? We got BLTZ batteries. Ooh, good ones. The best. Okay. We hit the breaker. Something's happening. Oh, it's moving. Oh, wait. Is it? Yeah. yeah, it's moving. It's closing. There he goes. Let's turn the temp way up. See what happened? Mm hmm. Oh, I'm not hitting it with the remote now. All right, so we're going to read the manual, figure out how to get this into Fahrenheit. Well, we've had the mini split installed for a few days and already I am so impressed. It's really, really quiet. You don't even know that it's on, except for when I walk by, I get a little puff of warm heat, which is so nice this time of year. So overall, I'm really happy with it. I'll let Ryan give his two cents as well. <laughs> yeah, overall, I'm also very impressed with its performance relative to the outside temperature. This morning, it was 15 degrees out Fahrenheit and it was still putting out some warm air. It's not enough to heat the cabin by itself, but it's supplementing the propane stove. And then the other thing I've noticed is on like a 30 degree day, it's able to just maintain 70 degrees in here all by itself. So very happy with it. I'm not really sure what the power consumption on it's going to be yet, but I have a, a good feeling that, you know, compared to running a propane stove, it's going to be quite a bit less. And if you're interested in getting the same mini split, we got it from Signature Solar. They have been awesome to work with. And I even have a discount code for you. So it's Homesteading RD50, so that'll get you $50 off your orders of $500 or more. And I have an affiliate link. If you're willing to use that, I always so appreciate it. I'll put all the information in the video description. As always, thanks so much for being here. We always appreciate you guys coming along on our journey here. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll catch you on the next video.